Is this thing on? Is this thing working? Okay, I think it is, all right. Hey guys, and welcome back to my channel. Today we are going to be transforming my dining room into a stunning, beautiful fall harvest party. And we're also going to be cooking up some amazing things in the kitchen. I'll definitely have those recipes in the descriptions down below, so definitely check those out. We're gonna be making a couple different drinks that I love to serve for folks during the fall season, so definitely stick around for those. If you would like to, please subscribe to my videos for more inspiration for all all things seasons and home I definitely like this video if you like decorating your house as much as I do so what I'm gonna do is show you guys around a couple of the things we're gonna be using today and then we're gonna get started so right here I just have a box of a couple of little things of fillers pumpkins and some leaves just in case I use those but I'm not sure I'm going to I'm gonna to try to use a lot of real elements today so like lots of these real apples which are just really cute and adorable and then I've got some pears some other apples a little bit of foliage these two trays which i will link as much as i can down below a couple cake trays these really cute uh, hay bales which we're going to be actually using some larger ones too one wreath i'm going to actually be changing out this gather sign i'm going to actually put here so we're going to be taking that out putting some burlap on here some hay and some other cute things i think and then I got these at the dollar spot at Target. These are just little signs. We're gonna write like pumpkin soup or whatever we're doing there. And then I picked these up at Trader Joe's. They're just like little mums. And then some pumpkins, all kinds of different assorted colors. Love those. We're gonna do a tiered tray with all the different foods. These glasses I actually picked up at the dollar store, which I love. And then um, these I got at Home Goods. I couldn't remember. And then here's a couple little extra things. Here is some great construction paper that I actually might drape over this. I'm not sure though. So I was thinking of draping that over and then writing like gather or fall, it's fall y'all. Um, so you guys can check out how that turns out. If it looks good, we'll keep it, but who knows. And then I picked these up at Walmart. I usually get these at um, Michael's, but the price at Walmart was so good that I actually went there this year. So I highly recommend that if you're looking for a good deal on some hay. Hey, hey, hey. Hey, Enzo. What's up, girl? Want to do some decor? She wants to do decor. She says, what's up? What's up, YouTube? Oh, you're so cute. And then we're going to just line everything up here. I may use this for a couple of the drinks. I'm probably going to get rid of these two chairs as well because they don't really go with this theme but let's get started so to get started in this room I'm just gonna remove these chairs I absolutely love them but this blue is really gonna clash with a lot of the fall decor I'm gonna be putting in this room I'm gonna give everything kind of a nice wipe down I'm also going to do a little bit of vacuuming we're gonna vacuum a ton in this video because I'm gonna be using a little bit of straw so please get used to seeing that vacuum Okay, so for this little runner I'm gonna make, I am just gonna go on my iPhone and look up um, happy fall or it's fall, y'all, and find a nice um, kind of like handwriting I like. I don't use the Cricut or any of that stuff. I just like to freehand this as best I can. I'm gonna link the Sharpie that I use for this down below. This is the only Sharpie I have ever been able to find or any pen I've ever been able to find that makes your handwriting look amazing. I would love to know in the comments down below how many of you guys actually use the Cricut stencil machine. I have used one and it just, I don't think I would use it enough for the cost. I know it's not super expensive, but I just feel like 300 bucks for something I could possibly learn how to do on my own just didn't seem justifiable. But tell me in the comments down below, I'd love to know your experience with it. Was it worth the money? Um, would you have used it for something like this? I would love, love, love to know what you guys think about the Cricut. I 
I just love how this turned out. Let me know what you guys think down below. I just think it gives a nice authentic touch to this table. I was gonna actually hang some burlap over it, but this turned out so much better. So once I kind of get this laid out, I'm going to start setting the table and bringing in the different layers that are gonna have the food. I actually picked up this gather sign from Hobby Lobby a couple years ago. They still have it now, so if you love it, check them out. I'll put a link down below. You can have it sent to your house. It just brings in a nice kind of Victorian feel and it goes well with all of our art, so I just love that. I'm gonna add a couple of cake dishes. We're gonna be adding a tiered tray. This area I'm gonna set up to be very much like grab and go food snacks and cocktails. I don't wanna to do too much because I'm gonna actually be setting the table after we're done with this and that's where I'll actually be putting dinner. I picked up these really pretty flowers from Trader Joe's and I'm just gonna sprinkle them about to really bring in that fall vibe. This kinda is starting to remind me of a Hallmark set. I picked up those adorable wood crates from the dollar section at Target. They were five bucks each and it came with a, in a pack of two. And then I also got those little hay bales from the dollar store. I didn't see them this year, but I bet you could find them at Michael's, but I just really love how they kind of add that nice little farmhouse feel. I'm gonna be adding some fresh fruit to this area. I'll be adding a pitcher for sangria. I have a really great fall sangria recipe, so definitely stick around for that. And then I'm gonna be adding some fried delicatas and some homemade buttermilk ranch to dip those in. And then I'm also gonna be doing a chipotle spicy pumpkin hummus, which I know sounds silly, but it is so good. I don't know if I'll ever have a hummus any other way because it is delicious. What I like to do is kind of just get things laid out, even though I know I don't have everything out yet, I just wanna make sure I know that I have room for everything. In a couple minutes, I will go through how I actually lay out the food and arrange and organize um, where drinks go, where people sit, and I use Post-its for that, so definitely stick around to check those tips out. I picked up these beautiful pears. They come in a bag at Trader Joe's. I love them. They come in deep reds, some dark browns, and some beautiful greens. So definitely grab those. They really, really bring in the fall feel to the house. They're also gonna be in our sangria and our kids love eating them. So nothing goes to waste. I really, really love using real elements in my decor when I can. I also picked up a couple white and orange pumpkins at Trader Joe's as well. So I really, really love having a little mixture of the fruit with the pumpkins. I'm gonna add a couple picks in here to really beef up that gorgeous fall vibe. And I don't know about you, but it's not fall without a little bit of foliage. So now that this area is totally set, I'm going to head over to the table and get things going over there, get the table set. But I have to tell you guys, I just love how this turned out. It feels like a little fall market. So to get ready for the table setting, I'm gonna just wipe down this table one more time with a little bit of my Mrs. Meyers Cleaning Day, my favorite product ever, and then I'm going to kind of get things laid out. I'm not totally sure what I'm gonna do here yet, so we're definitely gonna to have to work on that together. Let me know in the comments down below, do you guys like my table this way or the way I usually have it? If you guys are new to my channel, I typically have my table running the other way, but because I wanted to open the space up so that the kids could run around and there was just like a little bit more space, I decided to turn it the long way. So let me know in the comments down below, do you guys like it this way or do you like it the other way? Felt 
So I picked up this burlap on Amazon. I'll put the link down below. I think they still have it. It's actually for weddings, but I absolutely love this. I'm going to be doing um, kind of a cascading tablescape since it's just family. Um, I only need enough settings for six people, so this is the perfect way to kind of set this table up. I'm gonna actually be tucking in a bunch of those beautiful uh, fall leaves, and then I'm gonna be adding a couple of these straw hay bales to the table as well. I was going to take the plastic off, and I know you guys hate when I keep the plastic on, but honestly, I don't wanna clean it up. And second, I also don't want the hay to be exposed around food and things like that, so I'm gonna leave the plastic on. I picked up these candle holders at the dollar store a couple years ago. You guys know I use these all the time for my tablescapes, but I'm gonna be actually adding a little bowl to put in. I don't know if you guys go to Trader Joe's, but they have this really delicious um, cornbread and pumpkin cornbread biscotti. It is so good. I'm gonna be adding it to the table to go with our chili, which is another recipe you guys are gonna to have to stick around for. And before I get all that set, we're gonna start kind of finishing up this table. I'm using the stems from my giant arrangement behind me here, and I'm just gonna cascade this down the table and then down the side. I think I saw this in like, I don't know, Better Homes and Garden magazine once, and I've always wanted to do it. I'd love to do it with real flowers. Maybe one day I'll do that, but for now, these look beautiful. Okay guys, let me know in the comments down below what do you think about the cascading fall leaves on this tablescape. I have never done anything like this and I absolutely love it. I just think it brings in such a beautiful feeling. I cannot wait to see this table finish up. So to add some finishing touches, I did put my really long Amazon um, dough bowl down the middle. I'm gonna actually be putting little bowls of chili down there and then I'm gonna use a tear tray to add some soup which you definitely have to stick around for because it's an awesome recipe. And then I'm just gonna be adding some little fall harvest pumpkins and apples and squash uh, to this table to really kind of just dress it up and make it feel like home. Since I used a couple elements of black, I'm gonna use my black hearth and hand plates. The um, gather sign is black, and then a couple of these tier trades are black. So I kinda of wanted to stick with a little bit of a different color since everything's a little neutral with pops of orange, and then this black really kind of played nicely off of those. I picked up these cute little um, pumpkins at the dollar spot at Target, and then these really beautiful uh, napkin rings I actually made. I'll put a link here on how to do this yourself. It is super inexpensive, it's super easy to do, and I just feel like it brings in this really natural and beautiful element to any tablescape. I can promise you're the only thing I see. So to finish up, I'm gonna be adding these insulated copper cups. I love these, they're great for ice water, which I'm gonna be using today because some of our dishes are a little spicy. And I'm just gonna put a nice little straw on top to kind of just make it a little something extra. 
Okay guys, so we have finally finished putting in our little bar area over here and we set the table. Together this took me about an hour to do and I will put a printable down below that you guys can download that shows you a little bit about how to prepare for any event, whether it's something as large as Thanksgiving dinner or something as small as like what I'm doing, which is um, just family coming over for a little harvest party. You could make this a much larger event. So one of the things I like to do in any event is I like to take post-its and actually write down what food is gonna go in what dish. So what we're gonna do right now, a couple drinks, we're gonna be doing some pumpkin soup, some chili, which I'm gonna put in little individual bowls. We're gonna do some homemade ranch and fried delicatas, which is like my favorite all time, like little side dish. It's like, you guys are gonna love it, it's so good. Then I did spicy chipotle pumpkin hummus, which I know that sounds kind of weird, but it is the best hummus you will ever have and I don't think you'll ever go back to any other type of hummus. And then at the end for dessert, we're gonna do some caramel bars and some uh, caramel dipped apples just to kind of bring in that fall vibe and I will show you how we set the table um, up to get prepared for food. Okay guys, so to start with this area, I have this long dough bowl here, which again, I'll link as much as I can down in the description below, but I'm gonna be adding three bowls of chili on each side. So what I do is write chili here, and I just put a post-it, that way I know what's going here. Now that we move over to this tier tray, I'm actually gonna be adding the pumpkin soup here. So I'm just gonna write the pumpkin soup on here and put it up above. So those will kind of sit right up here. Then we're gonna do the same thing here. So I'm gonna be putting fall sangria in here. So we just write sangria on the paper and I stick that here. These are the cups that are gonna go with the sangria so that's fine to stay here. So over here I've got a pumpkin. I'm actually gonna hollow this out and put our hummus inside. So I'm gonna add the hummus here. And then the other thing we have is the ranch cup. So we're gonna do the ranch and delicatas here. So we'll put ranch delicatas here those are nice little grab-and-go snacks so you've got a little cocktail you can grab and go ranch delicatas and then our hummus so that's pretty much how I like to do it I'm also going to be serving salad tonight but that recipe will be linked below I'm gonna be doing my kale and butternut squash salad you guys have already seen that so I'm not going to include it in this video but I'll definitely put a link down below how to make it and the recipe as well because it's so delicious it goes so well with the chili as well okay guys let's get in the kitchen so the first dish we're going to be making is a buttermilk ranch dressing you can either make this like a creamy ranch dressing or a little thick I'm going to be making mine somewhat in between what you need is a half a cup of mayonnaise a half a cup of sour cream, one fourth cup of buttermilk, add a little bit more if you want it to be runny, and then three tablespoons of fresh parsley. I'm gonna use cilantro just because I kinda like the flavor more, but you can use either. And then two teaspoons of dill, two teaspoons of chive, and then a half a teaspoon of apple cider vinegar. Once you kinda get all of this pulsed together, go ahead and add your spices. For this dish, I used one half teaspoon of salt. Um, I end up using a little bit more at the end, and then one half teaspoon of garlic powder, a half a teaspoon of onion powder, and one teaspoon of pepper. At the end, I'm gonna actually be garnishing this with a little bit of smoked paprika, which is like one of my favorite things of all time. And then I'm also gonna be putting a dash of pepper in here as well. Once you get this to the consistency that you like, go ahead and add it to a ball jar. What I like about this is it's resealable and if you don't use it all for an event, you can always reseal it up. I know I'm gonna be using all of mine, so I'm just gonna be putting a little plastic wrap on it and then add it to the refrigerator for four hours. This is where it's gonna get thick and it's gonna kind of bring all those flavors together and be perfect just in time for dinner. Our 
next recipe is a pumpkin spice soup. You will need two cans of pumpkin puree, four tablespoons of butter, one fourth cup of heavy whipping cream, two cups of chicken stock, you will need two cups of water, three to four cloves of garlic, and then two large yellow onions. To get started, we're gonna melt the butter in a large pot on medium heat. Then add your onions and stir for about 15 minutes until they're translucent. Right when that's done, go ahead and add your garlic and stir that up for a couple minutes. Once your garlic and onions have caramelized and stewed down a bit, add your salt and your pumpkin pie spices to this. I'm gonna add quite a bit, but you can add as much as you'd like. Go ahead and mix that up and really let those seasonings infuse themselves into the onion. Once these have all mixed together, go ahead and grab a wooden spoon and one fourth cup of chicken stock to kind of ground up those brown bits at the bottom of the pan. Otherwise, as you cook the soup, that spice will start to burn and it will give an off flavor to the soup. So go ahead and scrape all that up. And then we're gonna add our two cups of chicken stock and two cups of water and let that come to a nice simmer. Once that's all mixed together, go ahead and add your two cans of pumpkin puree. Mix that and then let that come to a nice simmer as well. Once that comes to a nice simmer, go ahead and add a little more salt and your heavy cream. Let that sit for about 20 minutes and then we're gonna put it into our blender. I'm using a Vitamix I will add down below in the links. This is a, probably the mid-tier one and it works great for this type of stuff. We're just going to blend up this soup and then get it right back into the pot before we serve it. I'm going to actually be serving this cold for dinner, but I wanted to make a bowl of it for myself for lunch, but I think it turned out so beautiful and delicious. Our next dish is a spicy chipotle pumpkin hummus. I love this recipe so much. We're gonna be starting with a food processor by adding our lemons. We're gonna be adding garlic and tahini. We're gonna blend this up to get it to a nice paste-like consistency. Once you have that ready, you can add a little bit of salt and your chickpea olive oil and your chipotle peppers. I'm putting a lot more in here than I have on the recipe down below because I love it spicy, but definitely follow the recipe if you're not that much into spice. Once you have all that in there, go ahead and add your smoked paprika, which is also one of my favorite things on earth. And we're also gonna be adding a little bit of cumin in here as well. Let that pulse for a couple of minutes or until it's nice and thick. I'm gonna actually be adding this to a hollowed out pumpkin, so definitely stick around to see how that turns out. Our next recipe is actually a cocktail. I'm gonna be making a fall spice sangria. We love to make sangria throughout the year, but during fall, I love to spice it up. So definitely stick around to see how we do that. I'll be adding two oranges, two apples. I'll be using some honey crisp apples. I just think that they give the best sweet flavor to this. And then I'll also be adding two pears as well. I'm gonna layer this inside of a nice water pitcher, but you can really put it in anything you'd like. If you're gonna be making um, a large batch of this, I would definitely kind of layer these up and let the uh, sangria steep for a while. Once you get all your layers in there, we're gonna make the sangria. I'm gonna do this in a bowl so I can whisk it together. I'll be adding one lemon, one bottle of red wine, one bottle of sparkling apple cider, one half cup of bourbon, and one half cup of fireball. What I love about the fireball is it brings in that nice cinnamon flavor and really makes this such a cozy, almost like a cold mulled wine. It's so good, you guys. 
I'm just gonna be adding one tablespoon of sugar just to kind of bring in the sweetness to incorporate it from this kind of like dry red wine into the fruit. I'm gonna let this sit in the refrigerator for about four hours. Once it's done and I get ready to serve it, I'll be adding in the sparkling apple cider. Our next pumpkin inspired cocktail or dish is going to be almost like a dessert. It's so good. I cannot wait for you guys to try this. It is a pumpkin spiced white Russian. I'm going to be using some amazing stuff I picked up at Trader Joe's. It's like um, a cinnamon bun topping and then I'm gonna smash up these um, pumpkin spice cookies to kind of dress up the rim of this glass before we actually get started. It's quite easy to do, just run the glass, the rim of the glass along anything. You could do caramel, you could, do, you could just do water, you could literally do anything just to get the cookie to stick to it. But the way this tastes with this particular drink was so good. Add a little ice to any glass. I'm not gonna be making this in a large batch, so I'm gonna be making this one at a time. I'll be using 1 fourth cup of Kahlua, or you can use any coffee liqueur, 1 fourth cup of vodka, and then 1 fourth cup of Starbucks pumpkin spice latte creamer. You could also do a pumpkin spice liqueur, but I just didn't want that much alcohol in this beverage, so I used something different. We're gonna garnish this with a cute little straw. You could also put in like those pumpkin spice um, little edible straws or anything like that. And now my favorite appetizer are crispy delicata rings. To get started, heat your oven up to 400 degrees. We're going to be making three dipping stations. One will have some buttermilk, mayonnaise, and sour cream. One will have your flour, and the other will have your panko with seasoning mix. In the um, recipe down below, I have a couple different things in my seasoning mix, but it's mostly smoked paprika, cayenne pepper for spice, and salt and pepper. You can use a nice blackened seasoning or anything for this dish. You can change it up throughout the year. To prepare your delicata, go ahead and cut off both ends and hollow out all the seeds. I'm going to be cutting these into one half inch little ringlets. To make the delicatas, you go ahead and add it to the flour first, make sure it gets nice and covered, dip it into your mayonnaise little mixture here, and then dip it into your panko. I like to press it into the panko so it gets nice and crunchy. This is not a fried recipe, so this really gives it its crunch and really makes this dish so good, even my kids eat it. Once you get all of those added to a sheet pan, go ahead and bake them for about 15 minutes or until they're golden brown. When they look about golden brown, go ahead and flip them over and bake them for about another 15 minutes on the other side, maybe 10 minutes, but definitely watch it. I forgot to actually spray my nonstick spray, but definitely don't forget to do that because these will stick to the foil. While those are cooking, I'm gonna prepare all the dishes for dinner. We're about an hour out from eating, so I wanna get everything nice and ready so I can relax with my family. I'm gonna clean out this pumpkin. This is where we're gonna actually be putting the hummus, and I wanna get it nice and ready, although it'll be the last thing that I put out. I'm gonna add chili to these cute little hearth and hand cups. I'm gonna be adding a little sour cream and garnish to the top of these and we'll be putting them out on the table as little grab and goes for dinner. Next up, I'm gonna add the soup to these little shot glasses so people can just grab them. I'll also be garnishing these with a little bit of sour cream and maybe some chives. The best thing 
I'm gonna actually be using a piping tip to put the um, sour cream on everything. Since we have house guests here, I just thought it would look cute to kind of fill this top and make it look really cute like a little dessert. I'll be putting a little bit of chive on top and I just love how these turned out. Now that I am ready to serve dinner, I'm gonna put the hummus in our nice hollowed out pumpkin. I cannot wait, this hummus is my absolute favorite. Um, you can either just take this right out of the dish that you stored it in, but I actually wanted to pipe mine in with a bag because there was no room in my refrigerator, so I added it to this um, little Callan freezer bag. So just pipe that in, and then we'll go ahead and get everything on the table. Collapse into water when they hit Hear the sound of empty streets. Yesterday has gone to sleep. So all that's left is you and me. I can promise you're the only thing I see. Hold my hand and hear the words I say. Close your eyes and let us fade away. So now that it's time for dinner, you can go ahead and lay everything out. Another reason I really love using the post-it method is a lot of times my family will ask if they can help me and this way they kind of know where things are supposed to go and how to set the table to help me, especially with my kids. I love this. It turned out so beautiful. I'm going to add a couple little biscottis to um, this hummus. It is just so good with anything. I, I cannot rave enough about this. Please download this recipe. You guys will thank me later. When we talk, making echoes as we walk, there's no one left but you and me. It's like a made up place that only. I decided to add a much shallower little shot glass for these delicatas that turned out so good. These were actually the first thing to go um, tonight during dinner, but I added the ranch, these little shallow cups. I got these little shot glasses at um, Home Goods, and they were the perfect size. Right as guests arrive, you want to add your sparkling apple cider to your sangria. And I'm going to use a little bit of ice and some cute um, little side pieces of fruit to kind of dress up the way these cups look. But this has to be the most amazing sangria I've ever had. I'm going to add a couple pumpkin spice biscottis that can be dipped into the soup to the table that people can just kind of grab and enjoy um, with their dinner. Well guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. This was so much fun for me to create. I know it's a lot of recipes. They're all linked down below. Don't feel like you have to make them all for one fall party. Just make them throughout the season and don't forget to tag me on Instagram at Mrs. Lauren Nicholson so I can see how yours turned out. And if you haven't already, please subscribe to my channel. I'm so happy to have you guys here and I hope you are having a very happy fall. It doesn't really matter While we should put some For those of you who are looking for the smoked chili recipe I actually added it to the end of this video So just stick around for a couple extra seconds And you'll be able to see that awesome recipe It has to be the most download recipe I've ever had on my website So definitely stick around for that I'll see you soon Maybe you don't want to know you don't see what you have in front of you Or maybe I'm not enough for you So maybe I should go If I had known from the start This wouldn't have ended with broken hearts
Hey guys, and welcome back to my channel. Today, I'm gonna to be sharing my all-time favorite chili recipe. Now, I know what you're gonna say, everybody makes good chili, but I'm telling you, this recipe is so different. I also have a vegan option for the smoked brisket, so definitely stick around to check that out. To get started, I'm gonna chop up two onions. I'm actually gonna only chop one half for garnish, so chop up three halves and throw it in a dish and then chop the other part of the onion really finely and then put that in a bowl to garnish at the end. For this chili, I'm gonna actually be using poblano peppers. These are my all-time favorite peppers to put in onion because they remain hearty and strong, but also give this nice peppery brightness to chili that I really, really love. You can also use poblanos for things like chili rellenos, so you fill them up with cheese, or you can even fill them up with rice and deep fry them. I love using these. They're sometimes hard to find, but I find them a lot of times at specialty Mexican markets, which have the best of everything. Next, we're gonna chop between four and six cloves of garlic. I like to use more garlic than less, so use as many as you like. You can probably do just fine with four, but I'm gonna use six in mine. Chop those up and put them in a bowl. We're actually gonna cook those down with the onion. So now for a little bit of heat, I'm gonna throw in one jalapeno, but you could definitely do more. I'm going to keep the garnishes on this chili pretty simple. I'm just gonna be doing a little sour cream, some fresh jalapeno, a little bit of cheese, and some fresh onions. And now for the secret of this incredible chili. I go to my favorite um, smokehouse or barbecue house or barbecue pit, whatever you wanna call it, and I will order one to two pounds of smoked brisket. This is so that you don't have to smoke it yourself, you guys, but I'm telling you, my house smells incredible right now. I am already salivating, cannot wait for this chili. So definitely go to your favorite barbecue pit, pick up your smoked brisket there. Don't worry about doing it yourself. Now, for the vegan option, if you don't wanna use a smoked brisket, go ahead and order, I have a link down below in the descriptions, liquid smoke. It will give you the same flavors and is just as delicious, but also makes this recipe vegan. I'm gonna be using a Dutch oven for this, but you can definitely just use a regular old pot. I just love using this for all things chili, plus when I'm done with it, I can just throw it in the refrigerator and reheat it next time. I'm gonna put a little bit of olive oil in here, throw in one and a half of my yellow onions, cook those down for a second, and then I'm gonna be adding my garlic. Let that cook for about 15 minutes on a low heat so it gets nice and translucent. 
So once your onions have cooked down, we're gonna add our spices. I'm using chili powder, cumin, smoked paprika, a little cayenne pepper, and some garlic powder. I do use salt and pepper to taste, and I'm also gonna add a couple other little spicy things I like, but you really can get as creative as you'd like. The one thing to remember with this recipe is it's gonna be super smoky. So whether you're using the vegan option with the smoked, uh, or the liquid smoke, or you're using smoked brisket, the seasonings are only gonna add to that, but you're definitely gonna get a lot of smoke in this recipe. Once you've cooked down the onions and really incorporated those spices, we're gonna start adding our other ingredients. I'm gonna be adding one 28 ounce can of diced tomatoes and then one six ounce can of tomato paste. I like to use a tomato paste because it really thickens up my um, chili, but if you don't like a thick chili, you can definitely take that out and just add like a little bit of beef broth or maybe a little bit of water. Once you've cooked that down together, add the poblanos and the jalapenos to your chili and let that sit for a little bit until it comes to like a little bit of a simmery boil. And then you're gonna add a little bit of water. I'm using about a cup, but definitely go and add as much as you think it needs. Now that the base of our chili is done, I'm gonna add some of our softer ingredients. I'm adding a couple ears of corn, I'm adding three cans of pinto beans, black beans, and kidney beans. I'm gonna let this simmer on the stove for about an hour on really low heat with the lid on, and then I'm gonna add my brisket. In all, this recipe probably could take you about 20 minutes. Um, I'm letting mine simmer during the day because I had a little bit of extra time and I wanted it to be ready for my husband when he got home, but you can literally make this in 30 minutes. It's the easiest recipe. That smoked brisket really changes this chili to be something really special. So go ahead and garnish it with your favorite chili toppings. I'm gonna be using a little shredded cheese, a little fresh onion, a dollop of daisy girl, and then I'm gonna top it with a fresh jalapeno, which is like my favorite part of this recipe. I just love, love all things spicy. I hope you guys enjoyed this recipe as much as I enjoyed making it for you. If you have any questions, put them in the comments down below. I have a link to this um, recipe for you to download, and I cannot wait to see you guys soon. Bye.